A firm's production function describes how inputs are converted into goods and services. Firms use the inputs of capital and labor to produce cars or iPhones or golden snitches. And how does the firm get this capital and labor? Well, it pays for them, of course. In this lecture, we'll explore the different types of costs a firm incurs to pay for production. And in later lectures, we'll see how firms can minimize these costs on the way to maximizing their profits. Just a quick warning, this lecture contains a lot of definitions, so get your pencils ready. OK, so firms pay for capital and they pay for labor. But the costs for each of these are fundamentally different types of costs. For capital, firms have already paid for capital they have in place. In the short run, they can't spend any more or less on capital. So we call this a fixed cost. A fixed cost is the cost of the fixed input and does not depend on the quantity of outputs produced. For labor, firms can adjust what they spend, adding a worker or letting a worker go. So we call this a variable cost. A variable cost is the cost of the variable input and does depend on the quantity of output produced. Total cost is the sum of the firm's fixed and variable costs. Let's imagine that the machine used to produce golden snitches costs $200 and that each worker gets paid $10. This table shows how many workers and machines it takes to make a certain number of snitches. In the short run, the snitch factory cannot buy more machines. So the $200 it has spent on the existing machine is the fixed cost, no matter how many snitches it produces. But the factory can hire or fire workers. So the labor cost in each case is the variable cost. When there are two workers, the variable cost is $20. When there are three workers, the variable cost is $30, and so on. So to produce five snitches costs $200 in fixed costs and $20 in variable costs for a total cost of $220. We can compute the total cost for all the other production levels as well. And we can draw a graph with total cost on the vertical axis and the number of snitches produced on the horizontal axis. This is the firm's total cost curve, showing how total cost depends on the quantity of output. To decide how many stitches to produce in order to maximize profit, the firm needs to know how its costs vary with output. In fact, the firm will want to play the same hill climbing game we played early with the individual who wanted to maximize utility. And playing this game requires knowing the cost of the next step up the hill. With utility, we considered the marginal cost of consuming one more unit. With production, we'll focus on the marginal cost of producing one more unit. Producing five snitches costs $220. To produce one more snitch, or six total, costs $230. The marginal cost of producing this extra snitch is $230 minus $220, or $10. This marginal cost changes as the firm produces more and more snitches. Going from six to seven snitches costs an extra $20, and going from seven to eight costs an extra $30. The marginal cost of production is rising as snitch production increases. We need more and more extra workers to produce one extra snitch on that one machine. This is consistent with what we know about the diminishing marginal product of labor. The next worker increases production less than the previous worker did, since they all have to share that one machine. So we need more and more workers to make that one additional snitch. And more workers cost more. It's important, however, to distinguish between marginal cost and average cost. Marginal cost, we know, is the cost of producing the next unit. Average total cost, or simply average cost, is the total cost divided by the number of units produced, or on average, the cost per unit. When the firm's producing five snitches, we saw that the marginal cost to produce the next one is $10. The average cost is the total cost, $220, divided by the number of units produced, or five to be $44 per unit. And we can make the same calculation to find the average cost for the other levels of production as well. Did you notice anything a bit strange about what happens with the average cost of production increases? The average cost first drops as production goes from five to six to seven to eight snitches. And then it rises as the firm produces nine or 10 snitches. Graphically, if we have average cost on the vertical axis, and total quantity produced on the horizontal axis, the graph of average cost for snitches has a U shape like this. Why is this? Check out the next video to explore this question.